Hey, welcome back to the channel again this week. If you've never come on the channel before, my name's Neil and I make videos specializing in finance, particularly investing and the housing market. So today in this video, we're gonna look at the big question that I'm seeing everyone talking about at the moment, and that is including media outlets, which you'd be surprised to hear, and that is, has the housing market now officially started its crash? So has the housing market started to crash in different areas, different cities and countries, mainly Western countries. So that's what I'm going to answer right now. now. I'm also going to talk about New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the UK on this video as well. This isn't just going to be the US. I'm going to talk about some of the markets as well. So let's start, as I always like to start with a graph when I'm doing these sort of videos. And we can look at the Fred graph for this recession. We're now in a recession. You can see the gray area here, just like this was the 08 recession. You can see what's happen happening with the printing presses, although we actually aren't printing this money. This is all digital. It's a digital currency now. It's not even money. It's currency. This, the M1, M2 money supply is going ridiculously uh, crazy right now. Now, the reason this is bad, and I'll link it to house prices in a second, is because all of this quantitative easing, which is what the you know central banks call it, it they, they, like, they don't really like that word. They like to say large-scale asset purchases. All of this new creation of currency, what it may be doing right now is weakening the currency that you have in your savings account. And I say may, but actually I believe it is definitely, it is weakening the savings you have. And that's why this week has been a big uh, chat, especially in our Discord chat group via uh, Patreon, Patreon community we're in. This has been a big topic this week. Actually, everyone's discussing what to do with their bank savings. Some people have been selling their houses what to do with all of this extra cash that people now have uh, because leaving it in the bank is inflating away every time the central bank it doesn't matter if it's the fed or bank of england whoever's doing it every time they create all this new money and remember all of this new currency is being uh, created and given out as as all of this stimulus and you know forbearance and all these other programs around the world Ladies and gentlemen, just remember what I always say, this is not free money. There is no such thing as a free lunch. It's not free money. All of this uh, new money creation now, new currency creation now, is only stealing from the future, okay? The government doesn't create money. All the government does is govern. Um, and, and now we have these huge governments, just way too big. There's way too much uh, bureaucracy and 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 governance right now. And all this is doing is making things more expensive and less efficient. But anyway, let's move into the first graph today uh, where I want to explain and answer this question because I'm seeing so many YouTubers right now um, thinking they're experts on the housing market, getting this really, really wrong, uh, especially about New York City. So people are saying, all oh, the housing crash has started. It started and people leaving all these comments on my channel saying, Neil, you agree with me, don't you? The housing crash has started. It started in New York. Um, and the answer is no, I, I don't agree. So let's just apply some logic and common sense here then. And let's do a bit of research. So according to this moving company here, the number of moves it has done has increased by more than 46% uh, between March and August compared with the same period last year. The number of those moving outside, so this is the key word here, outside of New York is up 50%. Now, that is a really important distinction here. So we know that people are leaving the city, but look at, look at this logically, okay? People are leaving the city right now. So why are they leaving the city? It's COVID. That is the reason. People don't want to be cooped up and they don't want to be compressed into the city. So they're going outside. So this is the reason I'm going to show you this graph in a second here. This is New York. So this is Alto's research. Highly recommend it. And I'm going to show you why this is the only graph I'm going to show you out of uh, quite a lot here on this video that is a buyer's market. Okay, this is the only one that's a buyer's market right now. So more on that in a second. So here we go. Where are people going? 232% increase to Dutchess County. All right. So here is Dutchess County, not far out of um, New York. Where else are they going? 116% increase to Ulster County in the Hudson Valley. So you can see what people are doing now. They're starting to move out of these, these crazy big cities where crime is just getting out of control. And it's not just here. 
you know, it's not just here. It's also over on the West Coast as well. So you've got LA. Um, people are starting to leave. And where are they going? Well, they're going to Arizona. They're going to Texas, Houston, Austin, uh, Phoenix. This is where they're going. I'm going to show you all of this in a second. I'm going to show you this on a graph. So firstly, let's look at this then. It's showing then, and again, Alto's research, highly recommend this. Definitely have a look at this. So you can analyze your own area. People keep asking me, oh, Neil, what's happening here? What's happening here in my city, happening there? I keep saying, you know, do your own research on this. It's really simple to do. You don't need to have a PhD in order to do this sort of research, all right? So right now, it's showing that New York is a buyer's market. Hmm, why is it a buyer's market? Well. I just showed you why people are leaving in droves. They, they're getting out of New York. So when we look over here, the data tells us what's happening. And now look at this as well. This is key. Always look at the um, price per square foot. So $1,734. That's the price per square foot. Now I'm going to compare this now, this $1,734, to somewhere like Millbrook. Here it is, Millbrook, New York. And look at the price difference per square foot, $293 versus $1,734. I don't know about you, but this is just logic to me. It's just common sense. Where would you rather live? Would you rather be in New York with this virus going around? Or would you rather be out where you've got a lot more space, you can get a lot more house for your money? Um, I know what I'd choose. But even in, in, in all areas, now th this is the other thing I want you to look at on these graphs. Look at the price decreases. So price decrease here, 14% of listings. And now the increase, 1% of listings. This is not what usually happens. I'm going to show you some other places then. Let's look at Philadelphia. All right, and we can see what's happened in Philadelphia. It is a seller's market. Last month, it was also, you can see this here, it was also somewhat of a seller's market, but now even more so. Because what's happening is people are leaving some of the other big cities and they're moving to other places that they want to live now. And again, look at the price per square foot. $216. Now I want to compare this to somewhere like LA. All right, so what was that? $216. Look at the price per square foot in LA, $735. And look at the taxes in Southern California. Believe me, I they're, they're very, very high, right? Why do you think so many of my friends, so many of my colleagues, so many of a lot of other uh, YouTubers, they're leaving Southern California? A lot of people, a lot of my friends, who you, some of them you'll know, they're living in Puerto Rico now because they pay about a 4% corporation tax versus 50, 60% tax in, in Southern California, some of them. So here's the other thing I want you to notice. Look at how many listings decrease their prices, 29% only 4% increase their prices. That is crazy, 29% decreases. Now, does that mean prices are going down? Well, not necessarily. Let's look at this part here. So let me show you the inventory here then. This is the other next thing I want you to look at. So definitely check inventory, because when inventory is low, house prices tend to go up. And again, I'm saying they tend to go up don't take what I say out of context. A lot of people seem to be doing that at the moment. You've got to watch my videos as a series and understand what I'm saying from video to video because the housing market is so complex. It's not like saying two plus two equals four, all right? The housing market is, is so complex. It's more like doing algebra at times. So you've really got to look at what I say in my videos, especially some of the analysis videos. Um, they're the ones that are in the studio. Watch those videos. It will show you in a lot more detail what I'm talking about here. But let's look at the inventory levels then. And you can see inventory was fairly stable, all right, fairly stable here. And then what happened as soon as we got into the lockdown sort of phase, which was as we came through January, February time, uh, especially into March, inventory just dropped off a cliff. And a lot of the houses that were, that were listed got pulled from the marketplace as well. So it's only really recently they've started to go back up. And this is what has been holding up house prices in places like LA. Now, I'm also gonna talk about New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the UK on this video as well. This isn't just gonna be the US. I am gonna talk about some of the markets as well. But this is what you wanna be looking at. You wanna be looking at the inventory. You wanna also be looking at the listing price. Okay, so you can see the listing prices have been going up and up and up. Okay, next area is Houston. So this is where a lot of people in California have been moving out to, so Houston, look at this. 
it is also a seller's market. Hmm, interesting. So what I'm trying to show you here through these uh, data, through these graphs, is that the housing crash hasn't started yet. Guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, please just do me a real quick favor and click that like button below. It will help to get this video ranked. Really appreciate that. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, why not consider subscribing? I bring you new videos every week, housing market, finance, economics, investing, we talk about metals, we talk about all sorts of investing. Uh, I'm going to help you as well for the future not to lose your shirt. Uh, there's going to be some big changes coming in the world, huge, huge changes, especially with what the World Economic Forum is planning with the Great Reset, what the central banks are planning with the cashless societies going digital. I'm going to help you to navigate all of these storms. So if you like the sound of that, just click the subscribe button and we'll take this journey together. So let's look at this again. Price per square foot, $183. That is very, very good value. Okay, price is decreasing though, 40% of houses are decreased. So if we look at the market action, it has a score of 37 here. So it has a slight seller's advantage. Notice the word slight advantage right now. So let's look at the inventory then. Let's reset the zoom here. And you can see, look at the inventory. Inventory has been and is still quite low. Okay, and now, so let's see. So this is seller's market, right? But only only slightly a seller's market. Now let's get into one of my favorite markets, which is Las Vegas. Uh, no surprises here. Exactly what I predicted is, um, would happen to Las Vegas with this crisis has happened. And we are going into a crazy seller's market now. Uh, even more than last month, a 48 score here. It is, uh, it's going, let's just say that. So price decreases 32% of listings, price increases 5%. Okay, next one I wanna show you is Boise, Idaho, which a lot of people are talking about at the moment, because a lot of people are moving there because it's really good value. So you've got $226 per square foot. Um, there isn't the big fluctuations as well, like some of the other markets. So you can see price decrease 33%, price increase 16%. But look at this. I mean, if that isn't insane, you have got one heck of a seller's market here. 66. I mean, that is crazy. Just shows you what's happening. People are flocking to certain areas. So you've just got to do your research and look at where people are going to. So let's look at the inventory levels then. Inventory is low because people are going there and buying up these, these properties, these houses. And you can see what's happened as a reflection of this. Look at the median list price. It has been going up in correlation to the inventory. Okay, so you can see the scale here. So a lot of this I just recommend you do yourself. Start looking into some of these things. Um, Here's another one, Phoenix, Arizona. Look at that, 71 seller's market, okay? So to really answer this question, because a lot of people uh, you know, keep saying about this, this housing crash, it started. The answer is no, it hasn't started yet. What you're seeing is people fleeing some areas, like some major cities to go to other areas because they want to get out of the risk zone. Really what this is doing, it's moving the thinking forward of a lot of people that were thinking of leaving big cities anyway. And also added to this, there's certain things that you and I don't see that they see because they live there. And I'll give you a perfect example of this. I was watching, and again, I don't watch the news or anything like that, but I did have this on because I need to do some research. So I was watching a news network, shall we say, I won't say which one in America, because uh, I don't want to cause any, uh, you know, left and rightist conflict here. But I was watching this news network and it was showing some weird story like some really weird stories and I was like what is why is it just showing all this like nonsense this is just you know wasting time so this is on one screen right on another screen I'm watching a Facebook live of a massive riot and I mean this looked like a war zone and believe me I've been in the military so I know a war zone this was like a war zone uh, you know there was an explosion going off there were about a dozen police cars on fire this was a massive riot um, crazy and yet on this this news channel, this is about this man and his dog. What what is going on? Well, I think I know what's going on, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say. 
right? So there's certain things that you and I don't see on the news, but other people that are living in these big cities are seeing this daily, so they want to get out of these areas. So I just wanted to get that out of the way before I move on to other countries, because I do want to help out my friends in America and New Zealand and Canada and other places like that, UK. So just to show you how bogus the news is in some places, and this isn't a bogus news article, but but um, last week I showed you some bogus stuff. So let me just show you what came out today. This is in Australia. Reserve Bank staff fume at ABC report exposing internal tensions over house price crash fears. And it shows you how dishonest a lot of these, um, you know, outlets are, shall we say. So Reserve Bank of Australia, here it is. Top brass at Australia's central bank have hit back at ABC reporting that exposed, and that is the right word, expose how the dire view of the housing market held by some reserve bank staff clashed with the rosy picture the bank's representatives presented in public. Now, do you remember seeing my reaction videos to, you know, the um, some of these experts? So I did one to the Zillow chief economist, I did it to the Korea chief economist in Canada, and I was exposing, just using basic common sense body language as well, noticing their IQs and how they you know, were responding to questions. I was pointing out when they were lying, when they were telling the truth. So it's very interesting because a lot of these outlets, shall we say, or even like the, the central banks and things like that, they will say one thing in public, but they'll say another thing behind closed doors. And I don't like that because it doesn't show any integrity whatsoever. They're trying to manipulate us, the public, into doing what they want to do. So it benefits them, the bank or the shareholders, the 0.1%, but it doesn't benefit us, the people. And it's just insane, all of this going on. So this was a pretty, I mean, it's worth reading this um, article. It just talks about the Australian market. And really, uh, let me just say this. The Australian market, I would say, is one of the top bubbles in the world. I'd say it's probably second only to New Zealand. I'd, if, I had, if I had to rank it, I'd probably say New Zealand's the number one bubble. Australia would be number two. I'd put the UK number three, almost on par with Canada, or, or we could say Canada number four, and the USA number five. Because a lot of people usually ask me about which is the most overinflated housing market in the world. It really is New Zealand. It, it's just gone crazy out of control. So yet yeah, the Australian housing market, I think is, is going to see some bad times ahead. I will be coming out with some material for you guys in Australia um, very soon. Uh, so let's move on then to New Zealand. A lot of articles about the New Zealand um, market. These are very dishonest, but this is, I mean, this isn't a dishonest article. It's just saying what's happening. Again, it's a seller's market across New Zealand as house prices climb. Another reason that we're in this mess right now is because there's too much red tape over building houses. Look at China. They have got ghost cities. If you don't know what I'm talking about, do a, uh, you know, look into this. They have ghost cities with hundreds of thousands of houses and apartments empty because they wanted to create their GDP through building and have lots of uh, accommodation ready for all of the people that were moving from the countryside into now urban areas, into the cities, the new labor force. But even that really, if you ask for my opinion, I think that will be short lived because all of these um, Chinese workers that have been coming in, I would say that a lot of the factories are focused more on robotics and replacing even the workers as the middle class has risen. The wages in China have grown at a rapid rate. I don't think anyone can really uh, compare or compete with the, the wage rises in China, possibly only Vietnam at the moment. But uh, not to go too far off track, if you look at them, th their, their country, they can build so many houses and apartments at a rapid rate because there isn't all the red tape. But you go to give you a good example here in the UK, because I you know, used to do development work. I don't do any uh, development anymore, but I wanted to do a development and you would not have believed uh, how difficult it was to get this housing development built. Really, it would have been a great development. There was also social housing involved with it, affordable housing. It wasn't just for rich people or anything like that. And what tends to happen, this is just a psychological process, the people that already had houses in that area, 
didn't want me or didn't want new people coming in. They, you know, they wanted their, their space. They liked how everything was. They didn't want more houses being built. And, you know, I've got nothing to say against that other than, um, well, some people might say that's a selfish mentality when, you know, people can't afford housing and you have the, the baby boomer generation with the majority of the world's money. They have the majority of the money. Um, I, I personally don't have anything against baby boomer generation just for clarity. I know that 90% of my channel is baby boomers, but you have to look at this and, and put it into context. We have this huge shortage now of housing all around the world because a lot of people block new developments, definitely blocked my development way, way back. And this is one of the issues we have. But uh, New Zealand, I mean, look at this, a 9% increase. <laughs> look, at it, it's, it's crazy. New Zealand house prices have just been going absolutely uh, crazy. While we're not seeing the feverish demand that peaked in May, after buyers came out of lockdown, demand was still up 20% when compared to July of 2019. Supply was struggling to keep up with demand. So you can see this is going on everywhere. It is, it's not just New Zealand and Australia. It's going on in most Western countries. We just haven't built enough houses. So now that I've showed you this article, let me show you the flip side, which is this one. Warning New Zealand's housing market could face September crunch. Okay, so this is pretty honest reporting, actually. I like this. New Zealand's real estate market could hit a crunch in September as the end of wage subsidies and mortgage holidays combined with the uncertainty of the election. What is that? What is going on? Some random video. Actually, what's happening in September, which it talks about here, is that the wage subsidies and the forbearance, or I think you call it mortgage holidays in New Zealand, actually come to an end. This is going to be crunch time for you guys. Okay, and now for my Canadian friends, let's look at this one. Average Canadian house price rose 14% in year up to July, Korea says. You know what I think of Korea, the Canadian Real Estate uh, Association? I take what they say with a grain of salt because it's always positive. There's never anything negative they have to say. Um, home prices increased by 25% and prices were well up from last year's level too. Yeah, it's always the same. You just never see anything negative from them. You know, there could be a 99% housing crash and Korea would come out and say, at least it's still 1%. You know, it's like, it's just crazy. It's, it's crazy how they how they operate. And you can see that you guys are in a bubble just by looking at this here. So the Canadian Real Estate Association, which represents 130,000 realtors, blah, 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 blah. Um, that 62,355 Canadian resale homes were sold on the MLS, shattering the previous record for, for the most sales in a month. If that isn't a bubble, I don't know what is. You guys just be really, really careful in Canada. Uh, I personally wouldn't be buying right now because, and also here's the other thing I need to say, all of this stimulus money, which is not money, it's currency, that's being created, it's not even being printed, it's being created, it is all going into assets and prices and things like that now. We're not really seeing the inflation right now, but it does exist and we're seeing these bidding wars because of the low inventory, because there aren't enough houses and things like that. Things are really upside down right now and, and they're just going absolutely crazy. Let's look at this article then. Again, another Canadian article. Canada Real Estate, RBC Economics predicts home prices to increase in near term. See, I don't know what they are classing the near term as, but I don't think that is accurate. If they're saying, let's say, September, or October for near term, then okay. But if they're saying the next year or the next six months, I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. And again, the problem with a lot of these media outlets is they use the present in order to forecast the future. And that's not how these things work. You don't use the present to forecast things. What you do is you look at history. You have to go way back and you have to look at previous housing recessions You've got to look at graphs. You've got to correlate, you know, what were the fundamentals? What was, you know, you've got to look at all the data as a whole and cross-reference it. You can't just um, look at, let, let's see something here. And again, I'm, I'm just skimming over this, but this isn't 
quite accurate. What they're saying is true, but it's not accurate. There's a difference. And they're saying that, you know, it just slowed it down. No, no, what it's done, people are, everyone's taking this out of context. Like I keep saying, people are moving out of the big cities. They are willing to pay higher premiums, higher prices right now in order to get the house they want because they are expecting this crisis to go on for a little while longer yet. Could even go on for years yet. So what is happening is absolutely nothing to do with the real estate market at large, the housing market at large. This is separate to the main housing market, all of these transactions that are going on right now. But what's happening is all these associations are taking all of this data and they're putting it together as if it's the same thing, but it's not. And as usual, I'm going to finish up on the UK. Uh, my favorite UK house prices hit new record high after surprising post lockdown spike. Again, no surprise, a media outlet putting out all this positivity. Average cost of home uh, jumps 1.6% and, you know, all this sort of stuff. You know, it's all positivity. Uh, 1.6%, 3,770 pounds a month upwards. Yeah, my opinion on the UK market hasn't changed from what I've been saying over the last couple of years. We are in a massive bubble. The UK market is going to come crashing down. And I'm just seeing people buying houses like, you know, they're buying a new shirt right now. People are just going out and just going crazy, um, especially with all the stimulus money and furlough money and all these other things. The other problem, I'll tell you the big problem as well in the UK, the government has given out uh, up to £50,000 um, loans that are, for, that are forgivable. So what a forgivable loan is, it means that it doesn't necessarily have to be paid back, right? So they're giving out these £50,000 loans to businesses. They also gave them £10,000, £20,000 grants um, right at the start of this crisis as well. So that was the other thing. All this money, people are using it Business people are using it to buy houses. And I know because that's one of our services in our company. So we're getting all these business people come in and saying, look, I've just took this £50,000 uh, business loan. Uh, can I put it into uh, housing? Can you help me invest it? And we're saying, yeah, but that's for your business. You realize that and it's got to be paid back. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that later. And this is where the term zombie companies has come from, because a lot of these companies have no way to ever pay back these huge loans that they are taking out. And 50,000 is just a, you know, that's the tip of the iceberg. Some companies are taking out much bigger loans. We are seeing companies folding left, right and center right now. My wife and I were just driving back from our local city to where we live and it was insane. It, it, it was really crazy, actually. Uh, the amount of restaurants and businesses that had just collapsed, like their signs are no longer there. You've got all these empty commercial real estate places, uh, just empty. Retail is going to die. So just be really careful. Don't keep taking the advice of all these people who say, get into retail, invest into retail and all this. Don't do it, guys. You will lose your money. But I think that probably covers everything from this video today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please click like on the video if you did. And please consider subscribing to the channel. And I will see you next week. Thanks a lot.